next one up is the three Eric's. I like this one. You'll see why in a moment. In Mrs. Jewell's class, there were three children named Eric. Eric Fry, Eric Bacon, and Eric Ovens. They were known throughout the school for being fat. Wait a second. They all looked fat? Eric Fry sat at the, this end of the room, and Eric Bacon sat in the middle of the room, and Eric Oven sat at the other end of the room. There was a joke around Wayside School that if all three Erics ever sat at the same end of the room at the same time, the school would fall over. Eric Bacon hated jokes like that. That's not surprising. After all, he wasn't even fat. In fact, he was the skinniest kid in Mrs. Jewell's class. But nobody seemed to notice. The other two Erics were fat, and so everyone just thought all Erics were fat. But I'm not fat, Eric Bacon insisted. What's your name? asked Jason. Eric, said Eric Bacon. Then you're fat, Jason concluded. Pretty soon, skinny little Eric Bacon, the skinniest kid in Mrs. Jewell's class, had the nickname of Fatso. That's not very nice. Eric Fry really was fat. He was also the best athlete in Mrs. Jewell's class. His body was solid muscle. However, nobody ever noticed. The other two Erics weren't very good at sports. Eric Ovens was clumsy. Eric Fatso Bacon was a good athlete for his size, but because he was so skinny, he didn't have much power. So naturally, everybody just assumed that Eric Fry was also clumsy and weak. After all, his name was Eric. Whenever the other kids chose up teams, Eric Fry was the last one picked. They never noticed his home runs or the fabulous catches he made. Like all great athletes, he made the impossible look easy. Of course, the other kids did notice the one time he dropped the ball. Eric Fry was playing right field. Terrence belted a deep fly to left. Eric Fry raced all the way across the field after the ball and at the last second dived at it. He caught it in midair on his fingertips, but as he hit the ground, the ball squirted loose. Well, what do you expect from Butterfingers, said Stephen. And since that time, Eric Fry has had the nickname of Butterfingers. <coughs> Eric Oven. Ovens was the nicest person in Mrs. Jewell's class. He treated everyone equally and always had a kind word to say. But because his name was Eric, everybody thought he was mean. Fatso was mean because everyone called him Fatso. Butterfingers was mean because he always had to play right field. So naturally, everyone just assumed that Eric Ovens was also mean. They called him Crabapple. Good morning, Allison, said Eric Ovens. How are you? Lay off, will ya, Crabapple? Al Allison answered. If you don't have anything nice to say, don't let say anything at all. So all three Eric's had nicknames. It was better that way. Otherwise, when someone said, hey Eric, no one knew to whom he was talking. One time all the Eric's would answer, and the next time none of them would answer. But then when someone would say, hey Crabapple, Eric Ovens knew they were talking to him. And if someone said, hey Butterfingers, Eric Fry knew they meant him. And when someone said, hey Fatso, Eric Bacon knew he was being I guess we learned the lesson that just because of someone's name or just because of what they look like or just because of one thing they did, we shouldn't label them and, and think that that's how they always are, right? It's always a lesson. Okay, we are going to move on to Allison. Allison had pretty blonde hair and always wore a sky blue windbreaker. Her windbreaker was the same color as her eyes. She was best friends with Rondi. Rondi had blonde hair, too, but she was missing her two front teeth. Allison had all her teeth. Allison used to say that she knocked Rondi's teeth out. Allison was very pretty, so all the boys in Mrs. Jewell's class teased her, especially Jason. But Allison said, leave me alone or I'll knock your teeth out, like I did Rondi's. And then the boys didn't bother her after that. One day, Allison brought a tangerine for lunch. She took the peel off in one piece. Miss Mush, the lunch teacher, walked up to her. Allison, may I have your tangerine, she asked. Miss Mush always gave food to the children, so Allison was happy to give her tangerine to Miss Mush. Miss Mush shoved it in her mouth and swallowed it in less than four seconds. Allison left the lunchroom and walked down to the library. The lunchroom was on the 15th story. The library was on the 7th. Allison already had her book. She just went to the library because it was nice and quiet there. The librarian walked up to Allison. What are you reading, she asked. Allison told her the name of the book. That sounds like a good book, said the librarian. I never read that one. May I borrow it? The librarian was always lending books to children. 
Allison was glad to be able to return the favor. She gave the librarian the book, then walked down the stairs outside to, playground, to the playground. All of Allison's friends were playing freeze tag. Allison didn't feel like playing. She reached into the pocket of her sky blue windbreaker and took out a tennis ball. She bounced it a couple times on the ground. Lewis came up to her. Hi, Allison, he said. May I play with your tennis ball? Lewis was always giving balls out to children, and Allison happily gave her ball to Lewis. Lewis threw the ball all the way to the other side of the playground. Then he went chasing after it. Allison didn't feel like doing anything. Jason ran up and tagged her. You're frozen, he said. Get out of here or I'll knock your teeth out, she said. Jason shrugged his shoulders and left. Allison went back inside and up the 30 flights of stairs to Mrs. Jewell's room. The lunch period wasn't over yet, but Allison didn't feel like doing anything else. She had given her food to the lunch teacher, her book to the librarian, and her ball to the yard teacher. She went inside her classroom. Mrs. Jules was there. Oh, Allison, I'm glad you're here. I'm having trouble with an arithmetic problem. Maybe you can help. Sure, said Allison. Mrs. Jules always helped the children with their problems. Allison was happy to help. How do you spell chair? asked Mrs. Jules. C-H-A-I-R, said Allison. Yes, that's right. I knew it wasn't C-H-A-R-E, but I couldn't remember what it was. That's not an arithmetic problem, said Allison. That's spelling. You're right again, said Mrs. Jules. I always get those two mixed up. The bell rang. The lunch period was over. Allison could hear the other children running up the stairs. Allison, said Mrs. Jules, you learned a very important secret today, and I don't want you to tell any of the other children, not even Rondi. What was that? asked Allison. She didn't even know she had learned a secret. She loved secrets. You learned that children are really smarter than their teachers, said Mrs. Jules. Oh, that's no secret, said Allison. Everybody knows that. Are you all smarter than me? Sometimes I think so.